Hey, everybody, it's me, Tom. I'd like to thank the good people at Factormeals.com for coming on board and sponsoring today's program. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with the pre-prepared, chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. It's so nice to get a complete meal right there. If I'm not doing things from scratch... And it's like, okay, it's Tuesday. I'm running in right after the podcast. My wife's coming home from work. Factor Meals, we have it. It's in the fridge. We're going to have a great meal. We're going to have a beautiful salad with chicken breast. This is going to be delicious. Factormeals.com. Head to factormeals.com slash papa50. That's papa50. And use the code papa50 to get 50% off. That's code papa50 at factormeals.com slash papa50 to get 50% off factormeals.com. We'd also like to thank the good people working hard at tompapa.com. We are roaring out there with our big tour. Things are going great. We're doing all these shows. We've got Boston. We've got New Hampshire. We've got Joliet, Illinois. We're all over the place. And ending up in the big show, the biggest show of the year, in Washington, D.C., at the Warner Theater. Two shows, one night, all recorded, for Netflix, the next special. We're very excited, and I want you to be a part of it. So thank you to all the people working hard at TomPapa.com. It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! Kira, I don't know if you know this, but last time David uh, came by the podcast... Uh, I gave him a bread, and he was on the road. So he goes next to James Corden uh, and gave my bread on TV to Corden. <laughs> nice. I gave it to a lady. Uh, initially, it was oh, right. Corden, and I was like, no, I, you shouldn't have the bread. Somebody, some, you're, you know, one of your guests should have the bread, so I gave it to some lady. It smelled in the audience. amazing. He had made fresh. Oh. It was like in the you know COVID-adjacent yes. era, and uh, he's yeah. making bread. And I still do it. Smells. It was. It's looked and smelled fantastic. And uh, and if I wasn't going on a plane, uh, right? You know. Is it weird to bring a loaf of bread on a plane? Um, <laughs> you know, it's not. I don't. I wouldn't mind it if somebody uh, on the plane had a, a delicious smelling loaf of bread. But I just. It's, it's not going to fit in the car. It's you know, big. Yeah, it was big. It yeah. wasn't going to fit in the. Gaffigan in the took it on the plane, and he. You know, jammed it in there, and he's also fat. <laughs> uh, but it was it warmed my heart because he gave it to Corden, and Corden's like, "Whoa, this is beautiful!" And he's complimenting the bread, he's t- yeah. he's touching the bread, and then they handed it out. It really was one of my proudest oh, bread good. moments. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, I I wish I could have, you know, had some. It's it smelled and, and yeah. looked amazing. I'll so. I'll get you some. So we, I just brought you pastries because I know you're on the road. So instead of bread, is that rugola? I brought you a pastry. It's not. It's actually yeah. Italian. It's like an Italian rugola. What what is it? What's there's, it called? There's there's almond in there. You have a peanut allergy? No. <laughs> there no, are well, almonds. almonds aren't peanuts. So <laughs> no, I know, but there's almonds. Wait a there's, minute. There's yeah, yeah. walnuts. Wait, is that yeah. true? Legally now, as of about uh, four months ago. Yeah, because yeah. I remember they were peanuts. Scotus. Scotus oh, did it. Yeah. Oh my Wait, what God. happened? It almonds the were peanuts, yeah. and now almonds are not peanuts. Well, do you almonds mean peanuts are almonds or nuts? Peanuts. Peanuts. They were peanuts. They went by yeah. peanuts, but peanuts for a long time. Peanuts aren't even nuts. Peanuts are legumes. That's very true. So that's very true. Everyone's just wearing a disguise. Now, can everyone's I, lying. I don't know if that's very true. That seems like kind no, of it true. No, it is true. It is true. It is true. Yes. I, I have gotten into. Um, uh, Boiled peanuts, which I I grew up in the South, and and I wasn't that into them when I was younger, but I don't know three years ago or something like that. I was back in Atlanta, back home, uh-huh. and uh, and I went to this place that has really good boiled peanuts, and I had some. And I was like, man, I forgot about how good these are. Yeah, and so I just started <laughs> uh, buying raw peanuts and making my own boiled peanuts, which I uh-huh. do, you know, until they run out, and then I make some more. Is it a messy affair? No, it's easy. Yeah, it's it, eating them is messy because uh-huh. it's still you want some of the liquid, you know. So uh, and they're hot. You, you want them hot. <coughs> Excuse me, right. hot. So um, every seventh or eighth one of them will just squirt a big <laughs> so hot liquid. You just open it up and, it, but it's worth it. They're <laughs> fucking delicious. Really, and uh, 
And I learned from in my you know researching what to do and yeah. what the best thing is that they are <laughs> legumes. Hell. Yes. Well, because I have a kid with a peanut allergy. Because oh. this whole generation has some sort of has made up a effed peanut. up allergy. Well, they've made yeah. it up. They something, clearly made something it. is going on. So yeah. I know that if they're he lying. Has, well, I, trust me. In my next life, I'm coming back as an allergist. The easiest doctor. You can do in it the now. World. I don't know why you you're waiting for it. Honestly, you waiting because reincarnation. this is their answer to Wait, everything. You don't have to die and come yeah, back. You don't have to die and come back. <laughs> their answer is, well, why did this happen? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Well, why did this? Why, why is he? Why is that? Why did he grow out of this? Could he grow out of? Well, nobody knows. You're doing it now. You could do it right now. I honestly could. <laughs> you could go do it. I mean, isn't there like a, a market for like a medicine woman where you don't really have a license to practice oh, medicine? Oh, God. Are you in L.A.? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Los in. Go I to Air do, One. I just go to Air One yeah, and hang out. Just hang out next to their smoothie area where everyone's paying 50 bucks for a Sai yeah. smoothies. So we also got you a, a little muffin if you want. That's nice. I, I appreciate it. I'm not going to eat any of it. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't like the... I, I, I love almonds. Love yeah. it. But I do not like... What's it called? Marzipan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. like it. I don't like the fake, not fake, but like it's almond like extract. A mashed up. weird. It yeah. does not taste good to me. Yeah. Uh, this just looks a little boring. I don't know what waste calories. What's you're, this one? You're wrong about that. That has a yogurt in it. So what? you're wrong. What do you mean? So, but yogurt is not boring. Yogurt <laughs> is fun. It's yogurt. Yogurt is neither fun. It's yogurt not exciting. Yogurt is fun because usually they just put like a butter when they make it. And they're like, I like butter. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you're, you're gonna, oh, you don't know. No, no. Yogurt this is, is not gonna an get, upgrade over butter. We're gonna this is going to get heated to really yogurt. fast. Yogurt. No, no, no. Because no. everyone's doing the regular, <laughs> mixing it up with some butter. <laughs> right? But yogurt? What? No, I don't know <laughs> this yes. thing. Yogurt. So that's not boring. So you're, and this is going to help. With whatever constipation. You Why have. is that a brand? I don't brand? have constipation. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It <laughs> looks take like. A bite. <laughs> take a bite. Take a bite. Take a bite. Come on. I will accept your apology any any moment. No, not bad. Okay. Hey, I'll there take you it as go. A, an apology. It, not the bad. yogurt wins. Yay. <laughs> no, it'd be better with butter. <laughs> All right. hundred percent. Okay. Easily. I made rigatoni the other night with uh, with butter and lemon. Mm. Oh, like the almost brown butter, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, and lemon and just the pasta water. Are you a big cook? Yeah. 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 I like to cook. You do. We, we were making something crazy last time I talked to you. I was? Something in big pots. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? Um, my potions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give them to the gentleman next door. <laughs> and your big wooden spoon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> were you making soups or something? I do. That's kind of my... Um, my uh, field of interest, or I don't know. If yeah. That's right. But yeah, I do uh, stews and soups right. and chilies, and um, maybe it was the birria. Was that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I made a you big. Can make that? Yeah. It's probably Impressive. the, of all the things I, I make, it's the most kind of labor intensive, but mm. it's, uh, it's fucking delicious. You do it right. And I let it cook for like all, almost everything I make, uh, I let cook for anywhere from seven to 12 hours. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah. Um, and the birria was amazing. What's I, in birria? Oh God! It's well, you, it's it's you can make uh, uh, pork or beef, um, and uh, it's just shredded right. meat, and then it's like this very, very, very unctuous red, saucy, uh, not tomato. Uh, uh, I mean, it's there's tomato, but it doesn't. It's not like an Italian red sauce. It's yeah. like. It's just you had. Have you not had birria? My they husband all, drinks it like think a so. soup. Oh I don't yeah, think they so. have the consomme. It, he buys yeah. it and he drinks it like it's a delicious. Soup. I thought it's you just dip into it. and He's like glug 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 the whole <laughs> thing. I don't know if that's okay. Is that okay? That seems a little it's a little odd. aggressive. Um, <laughs> yes, with yogurt also. Yeah, that's that's wrong. <laughs> what? Um, it's really good. It's a very. Uh, I guess the best word is that umami unctuous kind of right quality and uh and you just got to let it cook and cook slow and low that's my whole thing where does it come from is it like what uh, mexican is, yeah. oh mexican yeah yeah oh. that's why i was thinking because uh here they have the taco trucks and they yeah. have the yeah if you see something and it says red tacos that's usually what it is and then they have the um it's all over new york you know right. they you have the cheese so that the tortilla that's um, kind of got like griddled with the cheese on it and then the birria meat in it with, mm. and it's stewed so it's ton, yeah. tons of the juice they put it in there and then you can dip it in a little they give you a little cup of the sauce the right. juice the oh. consomme 
and it's fuck, it's so good. Wow, it's really it's really incredible. good. Wow. You should you should check it out because there's yeah. lots of them here. And you eat it naked. <laughs> they yeah. say that because if you will just stay <laughs> and afraid. Oh, really? Try to do na- try naked to eat it afraid. naked and afraid. Yeah. Go out in the woods <laughs> where you know there are bears. And and then get disrobe, <laughs> and then um, and you need like a not a cooler but a thing that'll keep it warm so that you can take out with you. Right. The and problem then, with that, which is the most upsetting part of naked and afraid, is I, I would imagine if you have that beautiful meal with you, it's going to attract the bugs. Right. And on naked and afraid, there's nothing worse than the shot of their asses when they're covered in bug bites. That makes me very upset. Oh, I can't. I mean, oh, it's, I when I see that, shot. I'm jerking yeah. off immediately. Yeah, I'm <laughs> that, I can't. I can't even. I'll pay extra for that. I don't even have to jerk. I just come immediately. Oh, yeah, that's I, so sweet. It is sweet. That's it why is. it's sweet. That's why it it's been on so it's long. Sweet. It's very sweet. It's a very. It's feel, adorable. Yeah, I like that. It's your heart's in the right place. Yeah. I like your podcast. Oh, thank you. Your podcast is really good, and you, you're just getting started. Yeah, it's, I just uh, yeah. What's it called? Five senses or senses working over time. Senses working which over time. Never, ever comes up. Yeah, uh, it's not part of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean it was. Uh, I don't know. It if kind you, of makes sense anyway. Well, I I don't know if you had this uh, issue, but you know, for years, uh, people and I I get it. I you know I understand the the use it has. Uh, yeah. But you know. My my team, as it were, were mm-hmm. saying uh, you gotta gotta get a podcast. It'll it's it's just gonna help everything. You yeah, know, ticket sales and da 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 and exposure and et cetera. Yeah, and I was like, and I just wasn't that interested because I, you know, not for any. I'm not anti podcast. I just I don't. I just didn't want to spend any energy on that. Yeah. Um, and then I. Uh, Finally relented. It was like, fine, I'll do a podcast, and uh, and I they had me write up a little pitch thing, and it was just basically, I want to talk to people, and I'm a I've been talking since I was young, and I'm good at it. Yeah, uh, I've had <laughs> over one million conversations, and uh, you know all this stuff about I, you know, I'll interview my celebrity friends and interesting people you don't know, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, and they came back like, oh yeah, but you got to have a hook, right. And I was like, "What? What the hook is me? It's me <laughs> yeah. talking to people, being I don't know. What's it's it? No, no, no. You got to have a hook. It's too, you, yeah. like, and then they, you know, mentioned some examples. You got to. It's got to be about murder mysteries or <laughs> sports disasters or whatever the fuck yeah. it is. And I'm like, I don't. What? And I resented it. I was a little, yeah, little uh, Aren't pissed I off. And um, <laughs> and then I couldn't think of anything. And then, you know, a month and a half later, I'm walking around. I go, oh. I'll do the five senses, and it'll just be a jumping off point for a conversation. Yeah. So that, so I'll, you know, be prepared for what's the, you know, the, you know, the most wonderful thing you've ever tasted. What's the worst thing? What's the loudest yeah. thing you've heard? What you know, whatever Your favorite the thing smell. Is. Yeah, and uh, uh, and then very quickly, <laughs> and I should not even very quickly, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing the podcast, and no, and it never comes up. It never <laughs> needs to. <laughs> It does, of course, it doesn't need to. You are the hook. So, so now, but now they made me, they made me uh, record something, you know, like a quick thing, like, "Hey, so the name of the podcast is Senses Working o- Working Overtime, where we talk about the five senses." But guess what? Sometimes we have so much fun, we never even get to it. And I was like, "I, I said this fucking two months ago. Why do we have to do this?" What's so silly? No one cares. No yeah, one is no tuning one into po- podcasts. It's kind of like it's just a cool name. It's kind of just I do, a cool I mean, I do, like, it's, experience. You know, it's uh, uh, inspired by the XTC song. Um, and uh, <laughs> and yeah, it never comes up. It, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it can. Really, unless, until I heard you I heard you do that, like you mm-hmm. give the explanation. I was like, oh, <laughs> it just, I thought it was just a cool title for the podcast. Because it is, you know, it's sens- Well, the artwork is kind of, you know, alludes to the uh-huh. you know, Five senses. It's just uh, so unnecessary. It could have just been. Yeah, yeah. You know, not that I I like the title and I like the artwork and the yeah. the, the theme song, um, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with it. It's good. And nobody it's, gives a shit. Yeah, nobody's listening no. to the podcast and and going, hey, they didn't ask what is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what his favorite pig out food was. <laughs> right, exactly. You and I. I listened to uh, you and. Uh, Bateman, and then mm-hmm. uh, you and your wife. Yeah, but like you, you, you and Bateman, like talking, like 
to, for you to stop down and take out cards and be like, okay, let's get to the questions. I, What's your favorite? You'd be like, stop. You're yeah, having such a great conversation. I know. I know. Was Arrested Development your favorite thing? That smell. You, it was my favorite, favorite smell. smell. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite smell from Arrested Development? Was it the most fun thing? I mean, it, it it's it's so beloved and so great. Uh, the the first three series were uh, a lot of fun and a very, um, uh, you know, you you were on set and you were really uh, appreciative and, and aware of how special this thing was because... How early did you know that? Oh, I knew during the pilot. Really? Yeah, it was originally going to be... Uh, I said no. Uh, initially, I said I'm not... I had just moved to New York. I'd been in L.A. for nine years uh -huh. at that point, and I was always looking for... to, to you know, leave L.A. Yeah. Uh, to, to move to New York, and... Um, and I finally found an opportunity where uh, I was in between jobs. I didn't have a job, so I'm like, if I don't leave now, I'm gonna. This, some other job will come along, and I'll stay here for another year, another. And so I yeah. fucking really quickly <laughs> put my shit in a U-Haul, got it to New York, got a place. I, I sublet a, a a friend's place in the village, and then just spent all days looking for a place I could rent for you know the year and then et cetera et cetera and uh um <laughs> and just immediately like just did it closed it up and and because if i don't go now i'm never gonna go and yeah. <laughs> and i was loving it i love i mean yeah i was i mean it was some of the best time i mean uh, there was a lot of uh like there were periods where I was like, oh, I may die before I'm 40, but mm -hmm. I was having fun. And right. <laughs> I was abusing everything. And, yeah. uh, um, and doing stand-up and doing shows, and it was just this is a great so, time. so, you know. And also, uh, New York in that era was just, New York City, it's not like that anymore. I know everybody yeah. says that, and they're right. But, uh, I mean, just the music scene and the comedy scene was so fucking great. amazing. This is early 90s, right? No, no, no. This Late was, 80s? Uh, uh, no, that, I was in Boston for that. You were in Boston. So this is uh, uh, early aughts. This is early 2000, 2001, 2002. Okay. Um, and it was just a special time. It was really, you Side know, note, when did you start comedy? What year? Oh, I was uh, 80. Two. 82, you were yeah. a baby. Yeah, I was 17. It was literally the week before my 18th birthday. It was the first time I did an open <laughs> wow. mic night. That's great. In, uh, in Atlanta. All right, so um, New York is, yeah, that's such a... Uh, I, went, yeah. I went Atlanta to Boston to L.A. to New York. Right. So you finally get to New York. It's just all popping off. Oh, it's the, it it's was the best. I was having so fun. much fun, and I had a girlfriend, and I was like, I'm not going to New York. I'm not going back there. Don't even send me the script. And then... Uh, <laughs> Some people, my manager and also uh, uh, Bob's wife, Naomi Odenkirk, like got on the phone and like, this is a really cool project. It's a, you know, Mitch Hurwitz is a great guy and they've got this, it, you should check, please check it out. And they were, so they sent me the script and uh, they wanted me to look at Job and Buster. And uh, Job, I had no handle on. I didn't get. I didn't know what they were looking for. And then, and then yeah. you see Will, and you're like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's Joe, of course. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Makes sense. Because the casting on that show is tremendous. Insane. But um, <laughs> but Tobias, I was I was like, oh, I know who this guy is. I got this guy down. I know exactly who he is. And and I was I was it was a reoccurring, meant to be reoccurring, like six episodes a year. I'm like, fucking great. I'll fly out there, yeah, do work for a week, come home, live my life. <laughs> And so I had a conversation on the phone with the Russo brothers who directed it and mm -hmm. Mitch and said, here's who I think Tobias is and this and this. And, and they're like, great. All right. I'll take the job. So I, I went out. So great. And it was about the third day. I remember the scenes we were shooting were, it was after the pirate ship thing. <laughs> yeah. And then and the Tobias is in the uh, outfit and he – comes in about being an actor it's like in the jail <laughs> and there's and so and we're riffing there's a lot of you know and it was like it was that day which i want to say is like the third or fourth day of shooting where mm -hmm. i was like oh this is really good <laughs> this is a cool funny i mean every and that and i'm looking around at this you know yeah some people i knew some people i'd never met before 
talented people. Like, yeah. holy shit, this is a good, <laughs> smart show. And I, yeah. I remember distinctly, I was on that little bridge walkway thing at uh, the Beverly Connection, which is across from the Beverly Center, mm-hmm. and called my girlfriend and said, <laughs> hey, <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to do this show full time. <laughs> and uh, and that that was it. And, you know, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was a lot of fun. Wow. Those first three years, it was frustrating because Fox didn't like us and didn't really, you know, it was. Uh, that was insane. You know, it, what didn't they like? That's a good question. I don't yeah. know. I know that's, that it was. I mean, it got the critical acclaim. It got Emmys. That's the only reason we stayed on as long yeah. as we did. Even though it was canceled after three series, it never would have gone to series two or three if it hadn't gotten, uh, you know, numerous Emmys and um, right off the bat, and you know, and, and nominated for you know all these various other things. And uh, um, I I don't know what it was. I don't. Were the ratings okay at that point? No, no, they weren't. <laughs> they weren't. But it was. It was the kind of thing where, okay, you we've given you the product that you bought mm-hmm. that was pitched to you. It's clearly critically successful. It's nominated for and winning the uh, highest awards in this field. Now it's up to you yeah. to get the ratings up. Right. We are doing, right. we've done right. our exactly. job. You're doing your so right. Yeah, it's, that's a great you have, point. You pay millions of dollars, millions and millions and millions of dollars for your marketing mm-hmm. team. So th- we've given you all the necessary tools that you need to help sustain this. Yeah. Um, because if you don't, there's going to be a show, let's say, uh, you know, modern entity family style is <laughs> uh, well that will come that will basically do the same thing yeah. and they will get all the ratings so you should yeah. check it out <laughs> it's one of the few it's shows so that we would watch and then we'd watch it again yeah, yeah. right because exactly you, so much to if it if you miss a weird glance or some sort of thing or <laughs> like veep i did that with veep when mm-hmm. you watch veep and you're like i gotta watch this whole episode again and then 30 Rock. Yeah. And Arrested Development, where you watch it and it's new. Like there's something you missed, or a funny line that you were like, oh, that actually had two meanings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a silly I can't look. tell you how many times uh, I would be, I, I would find something out via the internet about a scene <laughs> that I was fucking in that I shot over <laughs> and over again, you know, multiple takes, and spent, uh, you know, a third of a day on this scene. And they're like, oh, when. You know, when maybe says this thing and then Tobias comes in and then, you know, Buster does this thing, you know, that's a reference to this thing. Right. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I so can't. Many times. So many times. Yeah. Like, learn from the internet things that I just I missed. <laughs> and we all thought that was you guys like planted all of there were it felt like there were all these different callbacks oh they were they were it was the writers though the it writers wasn't, it yeah. wasn't Incredible. us yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the <laughs> writing was uh meticulous you know crafted god you know. and i like that herwitz is a fan of stand-ups yeah yeah and and yeah. he i like that he they're so willing to do something that doesn't pay off until a season later, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Not just later in the show or later right. on in the in the arc of this thing. Like yeah. literally, a, two. It, the, we're gonna put this seed in here for two seasons from now. And it's, Patience. It's, yeah, <laughs> that's why I hated about the Sopranos. I love the Sopranos, but they didn't pay off certain things. Mm. Like there were certain things that happened, like with the crazy Russian in the snow, and then. Never came back. <laughs> You're it's just weird. Like it's weird yeah, when when shows do that, uh, and there's there's a bunch that do that. Like yeah, you want the uh, Lost probably being the most uh-huh. famous. Oh my god, I mean, this, <laughs> where it you, it went from, and I know a lot of people had this uh, same experience. You're like, yeah. I, this is I watch every episode. This is great. <laughs> I love this. And then around mid season three, you're like, wait, they don't know what the fuck's going no. on. Do they? <laughs> I mean, they really don't know what. They're doing. They don't know what the no. f- fog monster, <laughs> smoke monster, or the polar bear. Wait, they don't, and they just it has nothing to do out. with anything. It's like dating someone who's really hot and looks like they have their shit together, and you're like, I can't believe I'm dating. This is like an amazing person. And then slowly, you're like, 
oh, you're a complete fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> you are making all of this like a psychopath. Yeah. It felt so, it was such a letdown. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. it was the first of those types of series. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. I mean, it was uh, yeah, it was first engrossing. season. It, it, and everyone is talking about it the next day. What yeah. does this mean? What does that mean? Yeah. And then, uh, and you know, different people had different points where they're like, you know, it's like an abusive, <laughs> psychopathic, narcissist, liar, you know, you're in this relationship with. And then you're like, <laughs> I, th- I think I gotta cut the. Yeah. I, I gotta. This isn't good for me. This yeah. Isn't healthy. It's not healthy. They're full of shit. Yeah. And they even admitted it, right? Didn't they like admit it in some variety uh, they, article? Uh, eventually. Yeah. Eventually. There's a there's a book. I haven't read it, but I've read excerpts about the lost writers' room. There's a whole book. Oh really? Yeah. And uh, um, and they were vehemently saying, "Oh, here's here's what it was." So. <laughs> A bunch of people pretty uh, quickly said, oh, they're dead. They're like in a way station, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, like a... a, Purgatory. um, (laughs) Not purgatory, but like limbo. Uh Closer to like limbo as they're waiting. But, you know, that's the idea. And uh, and then everybody, uh, uh, Damon Lindelof and all the... All the people were like, no, no, they're not dead. <laughs> they, I mean, they came out and said that. So, because I was also following on the on the yeah. internet. Like, yeah. you know, what does this mean? What is that? Oh, the numbers. What's the significance? And somebody would break it down. You know, somebody's <laughs> spending, you yeah. know, hours and hours and days and nights, you know, figuring shit out that, you know, is off or not, as it turns out. Yeah. Uh, but... <laughs> But then, yes, eventually they, because, you know, now, I, and I stopped watching, but I was like, I wonder what the end is. Oh, they're dead. <laughs> okay. Huh. Well, go figure. So upsetting. It's like Newhart, where he just wakes up from a dream. Yeah. yeah great. Yeah. I'm so glad I invested. I want to re- I want to bring take back my question, <laughs> if I can. Okay. Because I started to feel bad about it as, I, as you were answering, even though rest of Development was beloved and... You don't have one high point because Mr. Show was also in its raw form, like had to have been another very special experience. Yeah. Well, you said fun. Right. And 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 Arrested was fun. Again, the first three seasons were fun. I Mm -hmm. think the the Netflix thing was not as fun. Uh, Certainly season five, which I never watched, was not fun. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I ask why? Uh. I mean, I I'm not going to get into details, yeah. but it was uh, let's say there Different. was a, there, let's say there was a lost quality to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was a difficult it was difficult for all of us. Yeah. Uh, and and there was a long time in between, right? Oh. Well, that well not between four and five, between three and four. Three and four. Which and four I liked. I I I thought it was I was I was. Disappointed to see that they recut it so that it was linear, but the mm-hmm. idea that they did, where you know you would focus on each character, would yeah. get like two episodes, but they were telling this big story, which I'd never seen before. I'd never seen that approach, and I didn't. Uh, uh, I wasn't that comfortable when I was watching it. It was a little frustrating, and then. It was around the Tobias episodes, around six, seven, that I started to click in, and I, I was like, oh, I see how to watch this now. Mm-hmm. And from that point forward, I could look for different things because it was all kind of linked in this crazy mind map thing mm-hmm. where there's a center story and then all these other stories that spiral out, but they all uh, inform the other stuff. And it's a, it's a really ambitious, cool yeah. uh, puzzle. You know, and yeah. it's uh, scientific almost, and and uh, mathematical, and um, and I remember like going, "What's going on? What you know?" And okay, so there's Michael's face block thing, and then there's this, and what does that have to do with anything? And why am I watching this now? But it was, or you know, I'd seen like six, seven episodes, and then it just clicked. I was like, I see how to watch this yeah. now, and now I'm going to go back, and and then they, you know, people didn't really care for that and then they went and recut it and made it all one linear thing and it's not quite as doesn't have the impact or the punch yeah. uh um you know if mm-hmm. you put in the time it's a cool artistic exercise yeah yeah um and still funny it's still arrested you know yeah and uh yeah. um so all your favorite characters yeah uh 
but yeah, Mr. Show was was fun, but it was war- I mean, arrested I was just an actor. So that's like yeah, a paid vacation. It you really know? is. You get you get to <laughs> play with all these really fun, talented people. Uh they're open to suggestions. It's very, you know, collaborative. Uh sometimes, you know, um you know, Mitch or the director would say, No, no, you have to say it this way because this is something that will pay off in five episodes from now. So it's sure. important to do this. Um, but, you know, quite often they're like, you know, have fun. Yeah. And, and it was fun. Just enjoy. And, and, uh, um, and Mr. Show was a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, but we were producers yeah. and yeah. writers. And it was, you know, a, I mean, no joke. It was 12 hours a day, six days a week. Yeah. And, and then, uh, and then in season three, we were, co-wrote and produced the Tenacious D shorts. So right. if we weren't working on Mr. Show, one of us would go over because right. they were like in an office in, in our <laughs> little compound there. And it was, uh, I remember, um, I can't remember the exact amount. I want to say 38 days. Uh, there were 38 days. I worked straight for 38 days. Jeez. No break. No, no day off uh, <laughs> between Tenacious D and Mr. Show, and it fucking burns you out. Man. Yeah, I mean, emo- like Basket in case. your head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, and you know, there was a lot. The way we structured Mr. Show was, we were always until the end, and we broke it down into two segments. So we do five episodes, and then start the process again five episodes later. But only until the end of the last uh, two episodes that we shot were we not having to do all the work where but uh, except for that time we would be writing writing sketches then putting together shows then uh rehearsing uh with the television director the show we were about to shoot and then shooting a show and then and then yeah, all that flips just... over into post <laughs> right so oh, god so it was uh, yeah. you know, really a lot of work. It's crazy. But lots of laughs. Yeah. A lot of fun. But you're so learning funny. so much also in those moments. It's like yeah. intense learning. Yes. Yeah. You know? And that's That was the first time I worked in those ways in any capacity. I'd written, uh, uh, I'd acted before, and I w- wrote on uh, the Ben Stiller show. Yeah. Um, and got, uh, uh, I wrote a movie with uh, Rob Cohen that was going to be for, uh, ben Stiller to direct, and so I'd I'd done some of those things, but I never did all of it. Right. And your fucking name's up there, and yeah. it's your thing, and yeah. and and you, I was learning about all the different aspects to it too. Like, wait, I have to go meet with the marketing department, and, yeah. and we have to <laughs> wait, we have to come up with this stuff, and I don't I'm, wait, I we have to shoot promos, but we're working on this thing, and and just <laughs> all the things that I never really thought about. Uh, yeah. And, and <laughs> Mr. Shows, and this happens with every project I do. Um, it was very much like um, my wedding, too, where, <laughs> where, you know, the, you're, you're working on all these different things. You're still trying to f- write this scene that isn't quite hitting, and I know it can be better, and da 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 and you're doing pre-production and post-production and blah, blah, blah. And then somebody from Wardrobe will be like, Hey, for uh, you know, for Joey's character, is this good? And you're like, uh, yeah, it's fine. And then, and then, uh, you know, you're like, uh, wait a minute, come, come, come back, let me see it. Uh, and then, <laughs> no, they should be buttons and not a zipper. And then all those, all the minutia yeah. of all those things you have to yeah. do. And I'm trying to dismiss some of it, but it was like, my, you know, when I, when my wife and I were planning our marriage, and it's, it's like you just deal with plates i don't give a shit what the fucking plates look like <laughs> get the plates you want and then you know she got the plates i'm like um <laughs> hang on wait wait those plates i don't know i don't know about those. you know like why do i care but i do care but right. yeah. and it's taking up all this other time and you know so eating better is easy with factors delicious ready to eat meals factormeals.com Fresh, never frozen meals in chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. It comes in a box, you open it up, you've got all your meals planned out that you ordered, you put them in the fridge, and they're ready to go. It's such a delight. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled and feeling good all day. What are you waiting for? Honestly, what are you waiting for? Get on it. 
The meals come. They're great. Their packaging is nice. It's easy to put together. Uh, my wife is, uh, you know, she doesn't like spending a lot of time in the kitchen because she's a hardworking teacher. But when I'm on the road and she can just pop in a meal from factorsmeals.com, she is happy. You will be happy too. There's no prep, no mess meals. There are pancakes. There are smoothies. Discovered a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast, midday bites, and more. We should get them to send my meals when I'm on the road. That would be a good idea. I think it could be healthy when I'm on the road. Have factormeals.com following me. It would be much better than trying to eat out of a gas station. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for a fun, premium options with no cooking required. Sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout. And every meal is dietitian approved and nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash papa50 and use the code papa50 to get 50% off. Get it? Papa50, 50% off. That's papa50 at factormeals.com slash papa50 to get 50% off. Go check it out. Spend some time on the site. You'll see what I mean. Good company, good food, good you. I think I might have just came up with a slogan for them. Free of charge. Also, a quick reminder, go to TomPapa.com for my tour, my books, everything's on there. And we're really promoting right now the big special in Washington, D.C. on June 15th, the Netflix taping. It's going to be very exciting. I wonder what I'll wear. I tell so many people, don't get, don't have a big wedding, don't get married, don't do it. Don't do it. It just, yeah. It, when I think back, like, you dummy. <laughs> the, all of that, we did all that. We sat there like, what if the ribbon is lavender? <laughs> just nobody cares. But didn't it make nobody them cares. magical? No. Are nobody people cares. still talking it about those rained. ribbons? <laughs> it rained at the end of May in Los Angeles. There was a massive <laughs> oh, that's funny. storm. That's... We had an outdoor wedding. <laughs> Isn't what that foreboding? Isn't that you, wouldn't you cancel I, the wedding at I that point? Cancel to. the marriage. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to yeah. cancel everything. That is an omen. I woke yeah. up that morning and there was a storm. So we knew the storm was coming. I had to rent a ten thousand dollars at the tent. end of May. The end in of in LA. That, wow, the that's Memorial rare. Day yeah. weekend. Wow. And if you look at how the marriage is going now, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> like it tracks. You know, very naked and afraid too. Yeah, a lot of. It was cool Proverbial seeing you and Amber on the podcast. It was no oh, good. Yeah. I want to I have her back. I, I was pitching like, you know, what if we do it like three times a year? You just oh, come yeah. back and we check in. And uh, yeah. it's cool. You can have a very it's it's you very seldom get to eavesdrop on a marriage. Yeah. You know, like especially. I mean, you're well, talking you, about so you don't know. You know, we have a. CCTV cameras in our bedroom. Oh, so you're able to go on. I don't pay for the Patreon, though. I don't pay for the Patreon. Oh, I already have it. Red Tube. <laughs> Red Tube. <laughs> uh, but no, it's cool. It's a cool thing to kind of, you have a You have a nice, like, uh, I mean, maybe it's, it can't be just for the podcast. You have a very nice, like, cool, smart, easy way with each other. Well, yes. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, but that is. <laughs> I mean, I think we're both, it's unspoken that we're on our best behavior for the podcast. Of course. So, uh, but, but, you know, yeah. she's very, uh, look, we irritate each other in, in uh, numerous and very specific ways. <laughs> uh, not intentionally, but, uh, yeah. you know, it's the really... fucking bitch won't clean up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she just won't listen. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, how hard is it to fucking stack a dishwasher? It's really not. Why do I have to take things out and reset them? Like, anyway. Um, uh, yeah. But she's very smart and very funny. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, that. And even when you're talking about your, uh, <laughs> about your daughter watching, uh, watching uh, Wednesday. Like, you can, oh, yeah. it was kind of cool to see, I like. Was, I, when she said that, I was like. What? No. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong the, with you? The series, the, the TV show? The TV show. The TV is show. Is it not appropriate? Well, his it, well, daughter's like six. She, she was six, yeah. Okay. And and uh, <laughs> and she, the whole, re the, how I came to know about it was <laughs> she was telling me like, oh, because well, I'll, I'll ask her, you know, when she gets up and because get her ready for school and walk her to school. But like, oh, did you have, uh, did you have any dreams? What, da, da. And she told me about this bad dream she had yeah and i was like oh and she's describing something 
And I realized it's from, oh, you were watching it. And then eventually I figured out, because I haven't seen the show, but I figured out what she meant by Wednesday. I thought she was like, oh, I saw it on Wednesday. And I was like, oh, wait, you watched the, yeah, Mommy and I watched uh, Wednesday. And I'm like, oh, okay. That I don't know if that's a great idea. Netflix. <laughs> Maybe. Scary. And she's really cool about, and this may change, but she's really uh-huh. good about if, you know, what, she'll say, when can I watch this? If she, if something comes up yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and you know, oh, you can't watch that now. Okay, okay. When can I watch it when I'm nine? Um, <laughs> nine or ten, yeah. And there's another thing, you know, I want to watch this. Uh, oh, you can't watch that yet. When can I watch it? When I'm 13? Um, probably before that, like around 10. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, she's good about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so but it was cool. It was a cool married moment in that, I mean, because she, it was, you let her watch that. You're basically yeah. saying, you let her watch that. And she's like, yeah, it might not have been. And you weren't critical. You were just like, yeah. Like letting her just think of it. Like, she, <laughs> she, great she, idea. she sees that it wasn't a great <laughs> idea. So I don't have to interject. Listen, my <laughs> husband let our kids watch. So I have a 13 and 8. Mm-hmm. Daddy's Home with Wahlberg? Is that a movie? I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, the yeah. the the stepdad, right? Highly inappropriate. <laughs> oh, really? He thought it was just a comedy. I go, when is? I got to defend your husband what? just on the outside of that. It's called Daddy's Home. Yeah, I I, Which... I feel the same way as Tom. It's it's sometimes you don't know until you're in the middle of it. Yeah, like oh, this is inappropriate, but. <laughs> I mean, it was rated R. Highly inappropriate. (laughs) How would you know going in, though? Because my eight-year-old then, the same thing as you, tells me (laughs) she loves to tattle on my husband. It's her favorite pastime. (laughs) You know what I mean? She'll be like, Daddy was lazy last night and wouldn't make us dinner. We got, you know, frozen pizza. Like, she loves it. She loves to tattle on anybody. She's like TMZ. You know what I mean? You'll never believe what I heard. Sounds kind of cunty to me. Yeah, it is a little bit. And so, uh, you know, so she told me. I met her. This story. <laughs> you said you loved her, yeah. you liar. So she tells me this story about uh, Daddy's Home. Number one, by the way. I know there's a second one that just came out. Oh. And but I, I'm, I'm with Tom. You, if you don't know it going Daddy's in, home. you think it's a family... You, know you see Mark Wahlberg, you, you see the poster. Is Daddy's Home appropriate? Talk to your box oh. in your pocket. Uh, is who's Daddy's doing that? Home? Oh, my God. A good parent. Do you do that with every every media Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. You do go, the listen, research? Listen, I'm a weirdo, though, but I go to I go to all those websites. Like what? Commonsensemedia.com. Yeah, yeah, the kids tell and you And they will right. tell you, the age group, they'll tell you the right. violence. They're a little homeschooly, so that's a, they're a little sensitive, but I'm Christian. like... it's all Christian. Okay, so yeah, I'm, you know... That's what I was trying to say. I yeah. will taper <laughs> it and... Adjunct of the Hallmark. Right. <laughs> but but no, Daddy's, Daddy's Home Women is shouldn't a, work. It's not appropriate at all. Zero. Okay, well, I'll, all right, lesson so, learned. I'm, sounds like I'm going to watch it tonight. You should. <laughs> yeah. You absolutely should. Get the kids, get the family. <laughs> does your daughter, does she show any interest in, you know, performing, being on camera? No, and no. I'm, uh, I'm thankful about that. And she's, give you know. Give it time, give it time. I, I mean, she may. She's... Uh, She's she's got an amazing voice and uh, pitch uh, or mm-hmm. what's it called ear uh-huh. an ear for uh, yeah. um, and she can go to piano and pick out stuff and and uh, oh yeah so there's there's definitely that talent there I don't want to push her into anything I don't want her um, and I'm and you know my wife was a child actress and she's very outspoken about the the pros and cons of that and right. uh, and I think she feels. I, you know, I wouldn't say I feel strongly, but she feels very, very strongly about her not getting into that, you know, world. And, uh, young. um, while she's young. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't know. She hasn't shown a real, she's very, she's very funny and will kind of perform at home and yeah. do things. But, you know, once you go, oh, show Aunt Wendy the thing you did, she gets shy and clams up and doesn't want to do it, which is fun. Yeah. And also, she has started <laughs> maybe, uh, I don't know, half a year ago, she started to uh, be irritated by the camera, the phone coming out to record, uh-huh. and, and which I like because that yeah. kid is the most photographed kid on the planet. I mean, <laughs> right. my wife, I, you know just yeah 
and and at some point it's like enough. Let's and let's be in the moment. Let's right. do this and uh, <laughs> yeah. and sometimes she'll say take a video and she'll think of something and uh-huh. and uh, but I'm glad that she's like no put the, no I don't want to be photographed right yeah. now or videoed or uh, yeah. Um, so she hasn't really. I know she's got that talent there. We've we've seen it, but um, and she's way into. Uh, painting, drawing, doing stuff. And she's way, way, way into that. I'm like, great. Good. Encourage that. She has an art table. She has a million supplies. And she's good. And uh, I'm better than me. I can't, I don't know. She must get it from my wife's side of the family because I can't draw. Nobody in my family can draw, like, you know, figures and things like that. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> I just, so as a parent, I get a little worried because it seems like she's gravitating towards the only field that is has worse odds than show business, which would be uh, as a sports, painter in, sports betting? in the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> He's into sports betting. Yeah. <laughs> my kids like? weren't, my kids weren't, my kids are 21 and 18 now. Mm-hmm. And they both didn't really show much of an interest. Then in high school, they started going out for plays and stuff. The biggest thing other than their nature was watching mom and dad not have to go to an office every day. Yeah, they start to see the lifestyle of of what we are, mm-hmm. and then they're like, "How do I make that happen?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> sure. You know, I think about that every once in a while. I'm like, I get to, I get to wear what I want to wear. Yep. <laughs> I pretty much, unless I'm acting or writing or doing a show, uh, which I love doing too. But those, you know, rarely do you just constantly, you know, go into the next thing. Yeah. But. You know, I I can set my own hours, and I can I can I never have to wear a suit if I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't want to. And, <laughs> and uh, I, you know, my daughter's going to be seven soon, uh-huh. or whenever this comes out, it'll be she'll be seven. But uh-huh. I would guess uh, that I've been able to spend more time with my daughter mm-hmm. than I'm going to say 97% of mm-hmm. American dads. Yeah. yeah. And yep. dare I say daddy's home. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the end of the segment. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We want to thank our sponsors, yogurt muffins. <laughs> no, but that is the thing. Then they start yeah. to see like, Oh, other parents are out working yeah. and I get to just kind of hang. Well, she, uh, uh, at her school, um, you know, she goes to school in Brooklyn, and it's uh, a really great school system. And she goes, one of the best uh, – it's a public school. And she goes, one of the best in the whole state. And um, it just happens to be a fluke that we are zoned for it. You yeah. Know? But, uh, you know, all these kids, ha- they have the after-school, you know, activities. Uh, yeah. at, like, there must be – 40, you know, whether it's music, dance, uh-huh. uh, gym, activity, science things, whatever. And it's because the parents are working. Yeah. And can't pick them up yeah. until after five. Right, exactly. And, you know, and those kids are, uh, those kids are in school from 8.20 to 5 o'clock. Uh-huh. Yeah. Five yeah. days a week, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's a lot. And it's good that, you know, they've got friends and stuff, but that is a lot. And that's because... Their parents are working and can't yeah. be home, and and both Amber and I uh, are able to be home most of the time. Yeah, you know, o- o- well over fifty percent of the time. Yeah, and uh, you know, I got my office. Amber's got her office, and and it's great. Yeah, it is. You great. know, we're, I we're, know we can. It's it's great, and I'm, we're we're lucky, and and uh, and she's lucky, and I have a reminder of that every fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still uh, Are you still planning? I remember last time you were on the podcast, you were thinking of adopting what was it, six teenagers at once? Yeah, to teach your daughter how to how to live. Yeah, and just and also just to you know help around. So right. we want to adopt uh, uh, a second child, but it we'll adopt like a sixteen year old. Yeah, right. So they can you know we'll put them to work. It's not a long investment. I'd you know, like to go out and get sushi once. You know, yes. I, I don't have to rely on date night when we have a sitter. That's a great idea. <laughs> so we get a s- adopt. A s- it's a win-win. Yeah. 100 percent And I want to adopt somebody named Win-Win. You know, so <laughs> if they, oh. they can be off the boat. They yeah, can be yeah, fresh yeah. off the boat. It's fine. 
in other countries <laughs> could. Yeah. I think that's genius because they already they, they wipe their own ass. They can get, you know, they can do their own laundry. It's my friend that just adopted a two year old and I was like, You idiot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, this two year old. Yeah. Can't trade get a trade job. up. Don't trade get up a puppy. You get it you get it a couple years in that's when they're right. trained. That's trade right. up a trade up to yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> We have it on camera. You liked it. I saw your face. I did like it. Yeah. I'll have another bite. <laughs> oh, please do. Tell us about, I'm going to I'm gonna do this the way that I hate being asked whenever okay. I do an interview. So you have a new stand-up special coming out. <laughs> What's it all about? <laughs> yeah. Is it funny? <laughs> um, what, 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 what can, tell people what they can expect. That's the one that really oh. kills me. Tell people what they can expect from the new special. Because I didn't do any of the homework. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I'm asking you to, yeah, and just like, do my work for me. Um, I don't know to laugh. That's how I always <laughs> answer. I don't know, to laugh a while. Um, Where'd you film it? Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, nice. the metro. Um, yeah, it was great. It this was, is cool. This is your second one in a short amount of time. Yeah. Well, the first, um, the first one I did, I was going to go out on tour, but COVID shut it down, and then I was like. I mean, a third of the material is kind of topical COVID adjacent or right. COVID related. So, you know, I you know, and and back then you're like, because it was the second, the Delta Omicron, oh, right. whatever. Okay. And, and like, winter, who, is this right. is this ever gonna fucking end? And, and I'm gonna get to get to go out. And I was like, maybe not. So I just um, paid for a production thing. We went to the Bell House in Brooklyn and shot it. Yeah. Put it out of my and that movie. title. That was I'm from the future. I'm from the future. This current special, which you can see on the 800 pound gorilla channel, right? Yep. Uh, and they produce, they're great. Have you ever worked with them? No, yeah. but uh, a lot awesome. of, a lot of my friends have. Oh yeah. man. I have one with them. I would, yeah. I, fantastic. Really great. Yeah. Really, uh, uh, such an enjoyable experience. And, um, it is a gorilla. It's yeah. one 800-pound gorilla, like not 801-pound gorilla. gorillas, right. which uh, people get confused. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Um, yeah, they're out of Nashville. They're just it, they're just a pleasure to work with and, yeah. and professional. And, and it was one of those things, too. I don't know if you had this uh, experience. It was like, ah, I don't, I'm probably going to have to, based on other experiences, I'm probably going to have to fly down to Nashville for two days and kind of sit with the editor and go through. Never. They, really? The guy... The guy <laughs> anticipated, you know, uh, of course we had multiple note sessions, but sure. nothing that I couldn't do over Zoom or wow. phone. Nice. I was like, I don't even have to go. Yeah. Oh, and and usually do. And you have to go to a sound mix and all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. They're great. I mean, I highly recommend working with them. Um, and they do lots of great comics. Yeah. I mean, they've really made a, a name for themselves in that, in that Quickly. world. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's on 800-pound gorillas. Uh, comedy site, and mm -hmm. then it'll switch over to my thing in a matter of months. It was on right. Beeps for a while. Uh, so, yeah, it's called uh, Worst Daddy in the World. Now, that title, yeah, you're not putting your don't, kids in don't front don't of show it. show my kids his special is what you're saying. <laughs> no, Worst Daddy in the World. <laughs> yeah. Daddy's home, you're like, this is going to be appropriate. Mm. This one, you're like, that my kids aren't watching this. <laughs> Can my kids or, watch it? Um, how old are Can they? Can my thirteen year old watch it? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Hey, there were kids at some of my shows, which happens. Oh but yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, where do you think they come from? Where do they find you? Is it Arrested the Development? Like, it's the parents. It's the parents. Yeah, I, they're not thirteen year olds. Aren't shown up on their own. I have I have thirteen year olds he coming to my show sometimes. Of kids. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think from NPR. I do a lot of stuff on NPR. Okay. And, and, and a lot that. of thirteen year olds are listening to NPR. Well, yeah, it's like the only thing. It's the only comedy kind of thing that the parents... Like they're driving their kid to school yeah. and they have NPR on. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like Seven-year-olds also. Seven. In the front row. <laughs> wow. Well, they're always, I mean, they're always a little kids. autistic. Right? Uh, the kids that bit. come. Maybe they're they're always a little bit like... Tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> tiny bit. Yeah. Um, well, my stuff is... Uh, I think it's appropriate, not for seven-year-olds, but 13. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, as, I, as I said, I had kids... Um, uh, there's a part of the set where I call up an audience member to read a script uh, that I've written <laughs> about uh, homeschooled kids in Florida. <laughs> and and uh, when I was in St. Louis, um, uh, the and, you know, when you're on stage, quite often because of the, the lighting and the, the, 
you know, way it's laid out, you cannot see, <laughs> really, you can't see much past the first or second yeah. row, and the, the light really drops off. You can't see. Yeah. Not, not all of them, but most of them. Yeah. And uh, in St. Louis, <laughs> it was like, I did what I always do. Like, I started to do the bit, and then I was like, you know, there's a better way to do this. Um, is there anybody who's willing to volunteer and come up on stage? And you just see hands, so I pick a hand. Always a crapshoot, always a roll of the dice. <laughs> and this kid comes up, he was 14, and at the show with his folks, and he nailed it. He was great. One of, one of the best. Top. I did 80, wow. 80 shows. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the best. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> and so yeah, he was fourteen. He was at my show. That's yeah. great. I had a lot of that. You know. Yeah. It's the parents who bring them. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And at this point, you know, if you're not familiar, what do I got eight specials right, out exactly. there. If you're not familiar, yeah, uh, then that's on you. Yeah. Right. I mean, I do a lot of you know. How'd you get in here? <laughs> but, yeah, did, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff that and that's uh, that, there's like a double meaning to we're studying the world because. It, my daughter says that, and and uh, that's where the title came from. Oh, I was really? looking for a title for the for the tour, and she, you know, like you're the worst daddy in the world. And I was like, oh, that's great. I'll use that <laughs> for the title. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. And then, but it's also like uh, the idea that what I believe and the way I'm raising my daughter would make some parents mm -hmm. say I'm the worst daddy in the world. Uh huh. Because I'm, I'm not faith based. I'm not, oh, uh, okay. you know, and I and right. I and I tell her the truth. And I, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm judicious about what I, you know, uh, how much information I give her. But if mm -hmm. there's, I tell her, you know. Um, Can I, you give an example? Well, uh, she was asking me about Santa Claus, I think, and she believes in Santa Claus. Which is fine. It's great, and it's a, a you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then you should plug your ears, Tom, <laughs> for the next couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, and she's like, uh, it was it was about Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, and just starting the questions of, you know, and she wants to believe, and uh, and then mm -hmm. getting into um, uh, Christians, like, why don't we, you know, because. Uh, um, we celebrate, uh, and by celebrate, in in the most basic way, Christmas mm -hmm. and Hanukkah. We don't really celebrate. She likes lighting candles. Great. Here's some, you yeah. know. No, I didn't introduce it to her. My mom, who's a little religious, did. And, mm -hmm. um, and she likes it. She likes lighting the candles, and she obviously loves presents. And, um, <laughs> and then getting into the, you know, other kids in the school and what they celebrate and why don't we do that and what do they believe and mm -hmm. and, I just, and I just put it out there as you know um, there's all kinds of people all over the world it's a big big world we all have different ideas about different things about what's out in space and what's here in our heart and uh, and and some people believe this thing you know do you believe it I don't but that doesn't mean you can't you right. can believe you know so it's like uh -huh. that kind of as opposed to some people, um, well, uh, a little over 2,000 years ago, uh, there's a man who uh, died for our sins and, uh, you know, the, all that kind of nonsense. Um, and, uh, and it is, you know, and I, and I also think the, you know, the Old Testament is, uh, is, a, is just absurd. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and it's, they're all based on old stories that people who – didn't have an explanation for phenomenon, natural phenomenon, came up with, and they right. and a, and and you know that people still have the same questions: How do we get here? Why are we here? You mm -hmm. know, and and people answering those with with very specific ways that I think are absurd, like right. a sun god or you know whatever paganism yeah. things that yeah. turned into that morphed into Christianity uh, purposefully, and. Uh, and so, uh, and also, you know, Judaism is just filled with nonsense, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, just archaic, dumb, ridiculous things that people still do. Mormonism is a, a, a religion, it's the most American thing in the world, it's a religion <laughs> that was <laughs> founded by a horny racist con man. <laughs> then these are yeah. this is demonstrable yeah. Yeah. you know right. you can, yeah. and like, and there's, it's worldwide. <laughs> and you say that as a Mormon. 
Ex Mormon. Ex Mormon. Ex Mormon. Yeah. You know, I I love saying that kind of stuff to my kids. Where we have very religious neighbors. I've told you about them yeah. on the end of our street. And which, they, which religion? Uh, just the Jesus, regular Jesus. I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's like an extra premium economy Jesus, but. I well, there's just, uh, born again, evangelistic. Mm, I don't know. I'm a Jew. I have no idea. I don't well, know. I'm a Jew, what and I have an idea. I have no <laughs> don't, don't, don't try to lump Jews into these ignorant. You know ignorant. what it is? It, you know what it is? It's uh, you know those Jews. <laughs> they <laughs> might have told me, and I go, "Oh, I know," because my husband's Catholic. He goes, "Oh, they're the ones that gibberish." It's those kinds. Oh, they're speaking in the tongues. Gibber- oh, gibber- the tongues. Kind. oh, that's uh, oh, wow. that's Pentecostal. Okay. Mm. Uh, and uh, so they they try to convert <laughs> oh, my wow. kids a lot. Hostile. Yeah, those oh, are fun. Oh boy, it's fun on the and street. There's a, that's, those are uh, uh, not all of them are snake handlers, but the snake handlers are Pentecostals. But snakes Three. are cool. Like you learn about biology and science, <laughs> right? No, no, animal handling. The ones that <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> well, they try to convert my kids a lot, even though they're they very do? lovely people. I haven't told you this no, story. No, no. Oh, give me an example. Okay, so they we live on a cul-de-sac. It's open doors. It's literally like an open house every day. They come into our house. We go to theirs. You know, my kids are always playing, and so mm-hmm. they're they're at our uh, island in the kitchen. I'm washing mm-hmm. dishes. I hear them talking, and the nine-year-old says. No, the, that nine-year-old was eight. My eight-year-old was seven. Okay, this was a year ago. Uh-huh. Did you know that Jesus is everywhere? Right? Uh-huh. And then my son, who's a little older, so, you know, he goes, really everywhere? Even in my pants? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Then my daughter, nice. with the most perfect timing, wow. she goes, oh, uh-oh, I felt a tickle. <laughs> I they're fucking with them. Lost my mind. I was laughing. So oh, I'm just sitting there washing dishes. Awesome. It was such perfect timing. The they two of like, them too. Yes. I would have, I would have gone it. out and gotten them a present. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you want. But but we're we gonna FAO Schwartz. <laughs> on Jesus. I do exactly what you do. I go, isn't it cool how we can think different things? Yeah. Like they have their ideas and that's awesome. And we know that they're wrong. And we have <laughs> our ideas, and that's how it's kind of cool because we're different, but we can still be friends and appreciate right. each other because I don't want to tell them they're batshit crazy. <laughs> well, they'll figure it out on their own. They will. And yeah. they, it sounds like they, I mean, they were they were messing with them, right? With those answers? Well, because we've already, we had already discussed, mm-hmm. right. you know, what, what kind of can happen in those situations. Sometimes right. people want to convince you of something, and if you don't feel like you want to be mm-hmm. convinced or you're just not ready in that moment, mm-hmm. you just say no thank you. And that's yeah. an okay, that's respectable. Right. We, I don't want them to make fun of them. Right. I do not want that because then you're teaching the kids like, ah, they're different, ah, weirdos. Yeah. But we've had a slumber party where they've come over and they they brought their Bibles to a slumber party. A, they live five doors down. Uh, wait, wait, the, do the they have children? kids or their adults came? No, no, these are the kids. These are the kids, oh, see, my I kids' see. ages. I, I got you. Yeah. Their kids are your kids' their ages. Their kids' ages I got are you, my kids, and they play a lot, and they're lovely. Right. And right. they're lovely. Yeah. Well, they better yeah. be. They're Christian. Joe, don't cut this part for the for the Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> they're lovely. They are. Yeah. But they do tell my kids, you know, oh, gosh. But just to circle, to hell. just to circle back. Yeah. Uh, you kind of left it open ended about the uh, the Santa thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I do. I didn't say he doesn't exist. I just said some people believe in this thing, and some people. I, I, I wasn't definitively saying he does or doesn't. Right. Uh-huh. And uh, and I try to be, you know, right. uh, smart about that kind of thing. Right. Um, I've never dissuaded her that he doesn't exist or the tooth fairy doesn't exist. But, you know, I also, it's just a byproduct. We'll see what happens. I also, <laughs> you know, will be curious to see how she reacts once she learns that they're not real. Uh, to w- how I addressed it. If right. that'll even, yeah. re- if she'll remember it and re- retain that memory. I don't know. Yeah. I took the approach of... Oh, I know why, how it started, too. Because yeah. one of the kids in the class said, there's no Santa Claus. That was uh, it. That was that's it. That's always the, yeah. That's, that's always, how the whole question the, That's the always started. the bomb that goes off. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then all the questions start. Yeah. I took the approach of, to this day, they're 21 and 18, just going, oh, he's 100% real. A hundred percent. And each year they would get you know more and more evidence and be like, all right, Dad, now we, I have no idea what you're talking about. A hundred percent real. <laughs> well, and, my, and my wife did something really smart and cool where, because uh, my daughter made a card for Santa saying what she wanted, all that stuff. 
you know, I made cookies. They made cookies <laughs> for Santa. And then <laughs> when she went to sleep, um, she got ashes. She got boots, my boots, <laughs> and, and went into the fireplace and like oh, to get the ashes on the bottom of those things. And then walked <laughs> to the little table that they had put um, the That's cookies great. and milk, you know, and ate half of the cookies or yeah, and drank some milk and. Um, <laughs> And so she was like, Marlo, look, look. <laughs> so the from the chimney, you know. That's was, a good uh, one. Or from the fireplace, it was, yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. My 13-year-old saved our asses this last Christmas. Why? Because the younger one wrote a letter to Santa. <laughs> and then she wrote an X. Santa, if you agree, you know, sign here. And we forgot. <laughs> we went to bed and we forgot. Oh, no. And my son woke up early. And That's he great. saw, I know, and Good he saw that wow. we didn't sign it. <laughs> so he's like, Santa. Because he's up at, I don't know, he's a farmer in a past life. He's up at 5 a.m. every day, no matter yeah. what. And so then we come down in the morning, oh, Christmas presents, what? Where'd they come from? And he looks at me and goes, you're welcome. <laughs> and That's I look crazy. at the letter and I go, so he was a farmer in a past life, and yeah. you want to be an allergist in the next life. <laughs> no, I, I should be an allergist in my next life because yeah, it's yeah. the easiest That's... doctor to right. be in the world. Yeah. yeah. So no, it, I think if I could speak for David. Don't speak for David. He's saying that your family is all reincarnated. We're all yeah. about You're past all life. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 and for sure. And post-life. Yeah. <laughs> future. I can't wait. How we're gonna connect so, in so our future life? If so, do you do you, Jesus is crazy? Do you think you have um, uh, any? Is there any kind of control over? Like, you want to be an allergist? Will you be an allergist? If uh. I just click my heels three times, so then the <laughs> yeah. life you had prior to this, mm -hmm. uh, you said I want to be a comedian, podcast host. I would love it. That's that's all I. But I think where I was, do you think you were having that idea? I think I was Fucking uh, Vietnam was, man, laying <laughs> bleeding out in Da Nang. The fucking patties of Denang. <laughs> There's got to be something better than this. <laughs> An allergist? No, wait. <laughs> What's a podcast? <laughs> yeah, I planned it all out. Yeah, for sure. Right? How, how, tell me, ultimately, Arrested Development was a bit of now a... How long is this fucking thing? How yeah, much time are we doing? Too long. Like it's three hours. <laughs> yeah. What? Rogan does three. We do three hours and ten minutes. Oh, wow. No, we're, we're, we're close. Yeah. Okay. We've only been an hour, right, Joe? A little over. Yeah, it's about an hour and three right now. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, this is a, this is a good question to end on. Okay. Ultimately, in your little in your little quest of your little show business life, going back and forth between I got to get out of L.A. and get to New York, and then being dragged back to L.A. and now you're back in New York. Were you right that New York has given you a better life? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I, I I don't know better, but uh, I'm very happy with my life. I have a I have a lot of things that I and a lot of things have happened that I am grateful for, and I'm uh, I have a brownstone in brooklyn which is like an old dream you know yeah. i was able eventually to do that i have putting roots down i used to move all the time when i was a kid and lived in a million places and like i'm not moving again live in a nice neighborhood street isn't great street kind of sucks but the uh -huh. neighborhood is great and uh what's wrong with the street it's fucking loud uh -huh. and it's right in between two main thoroughfares and it's also a big north south two lane thing so it's just honking yeah and traffic and it and it also it's a bit of a wind tunnel too so uh -huh. trash will if, <laughs> if there's trash down literally down the block it yeah. eventually goes and collects on the trees and the grass and everything it just sort of it's it's yeah it's not great but um and it's also frustrating because literally a block Oh, you know, or two blocks away in whatever direction. You're like, the most beautiful, tree-lined, quiet, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, but once uh, you're inside. I got great neighbors, uh, um, you know, and my daughter goes to this great school uh, down the street, and um, and I'm able to do, you know, and yeah. I, I've, uh, I've married this awesome woman, and, and you know, uh, and I can do what I want, and I, and I, I'm, quite happy yeah. you know and not to say that that couldn't have happened all in los angeles and yeah. and and you know this is in a much easier place i think to make a good life for yourself mm -hmm. uh, la you um 
you know, you can get more space. And you get yeah. a house and you are enclosed in that house. And if you don't ever want to think about the outside, you don't ever have to. <laughs> yeah. And people have fences and, you yeah. know, and, and, um, but I don't, I like walking. Mm-hmm. I like density. Uh, I like, uh, uh, you know, immediate proximity to all these different things. I like, yeah. uh, I, I enjoy mass transportation in, in, uh, in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I'm a comic, so I, I every time I leave my hmm. house, I'm experiencing things, and yeah. I'm talking to people. I'm watching, uh, observing exchanges, or having that exchange mm-hmm. myself, as opposed to L.A., where you live in this box, a nice box, yeah. you know, it's a nice box, but then you get <laughs> in another box with four wheels, and you drive that box <laughs> to this other box, and you go inside, and you work, and then you get back in your box and drive to another box and yeah. I don't have in New York I don't you know yeah and uh just to walk around the block is a whole experience yeah and I ride my bike a lot and I'm by yeah. uh I'm you know what eight it, ten blocks from Prospect Park which is one of my favorite parks yeah. in the world and um and it's it's just fun and and yeah. I could do sets I ride my bike or walk to do yeah. shows yeah and I love it it's pretty great you know I've made a horrible mistake. Well, thanks for <laughs> being here, David. You're always a delight. We're very excited for the new special. Are you going to tour off the special? Are you going to go no, out and tour? Oh, you did I, it up to uh, it? Um, yeah, I don't tour after the special comes out. I've heard the material's out there. Again, another mistake I've made. I think... Uh, <laughs> How do you... Wait, you don't do that, do you? <laughs> no. Well, I do... Once the special comes out, I'll keep, keep a, a couple months of like... You know, by the time you tape it, I'll work on a new act as I'm before it comes out. Mm-hmm. So because there's always a bump of more people that want to come see you after it comes out. So I try and. But take you can't do the material once it's no, out there. No. Yeah. No. Well, I think we ju- we have a similar approach. You're just overlapping a little bit more than I am. Right. Right. I'll go. Uh, what I do, and I'm currently just started on did four of these shows, but I do this thing called shooting this shooting the shit seeing what sticks which uh-huh. is i do like 10 shows in brooklyn uh-huh. and uh at like union hall so it's like yeah. 99 t- basement thing yeah. and it's really loose i have a couple of guest comics and i'm just up tape i record everything and i've got notes oh, and that's great. i'm hoping something because i do all my writing on stage you know i'm hoping yeah. it comes out sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't and i do like 10 of those and then i move to a slightly bigger venue because it's I'm starting to work on bits and they're yeah. starting to, you know, show me what they are. And, yeah. and, and I go down to one guest and then I do that for another 10 shows. And then I'm just, it's just me running the hour yeah. and then I go out and tour. That's great. You know, and then, and, cool. and I always tape in the middle of the tour and record audio at the end of the tour. Cause it's always changing. Right. Right. So. Right. Very cool. You've done such great work. I really, uh, last time when on, you... On that? On, on the muffin. <laughs> well, on the yogurt bread. <laughs> no, it's always a treat. I, you know, I've admired you for a long time, and I was very excited the first time you came on, and uh, I just... Uh, well, thank always you. grateful that you, that yeah, you come by. Yeah, well, my pleasure. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. All right, we got it, Joey. Joey.